Okay. <clears throat> there are, welcome back. In this process, there are circles within circles, and we now enter the next circle, uh, as it were, uh, of the specifics of the financing, the monitoring process, the legal framework, uh, and the startup phase. So uh, we have, I'm delighted that we're joined here by some of the uh, people in the EIT staff here in Budapest who are dealing with all of this. And as they're the experts on this, they're going to give you a short introduction on different parts of this process and we'll be taking more questions afterwards. Again, for those of you who are watching online through the streaming, uh, if you want to send in a question, do so. The hashtag on Twitter is kickcall, K-I-C-C-A-L-L. -L. So, thank you. So now we have here uh, Vasco Janeiro, uh, also on the EIT staff. Beside him, David Tass. Beside him, Jabal Sborda. Uh, beside him, Matea Famels. And last but not least, uh, Romain Muller. So, thank you very much all. Now, Vasco, why don't you take off first? Thank you. <coughs> and I see that you are sartorially perfect. You're wearing an EIT tie. I didn't know there was, I didn't know there was one. <laughs> well, well, thank you, Richard. I it's, don't it's have not, one. No, right. it's not really EIT tie, but uh, it's, it's, it's the IT colors. You know, you see, it's, I brought my, my green tie, and it's green for hope. Hope for the best proposals. <laughs> and... Yes. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here with you today, and also with uh, all those of you following us over the internet. I'm going to start by giving a short introduction to this session dedicated to the topic engaging with the IT and put into context the IT's principles for financing, monitoring, and evaluating key activities. So this session, as, as Richard just mentioned, is split into three parts. Uh, following my brief introduction, uh, we'll talk about the principles for financing, then the principles for monitoring, and finally, I will conclude the session to take you through the startup phase, the first year of operations of the future two new kicks. Now, you might ask, why did the IT publish these principles? That's an easy one, due to a legal obligation. The principles, uh, according to the IT regulation adopted by the Parliament and Council in December last year, should adopt and publish principles for financing, monitoring, and evaluating key activities prior to launching the call for proposals. As you all know, the call was launched officially on the 14th of February, and we published these principles on the 31st of January. But why are these principles important for those of you who will submit a proposal. Because they provide a stable and predictable framework to the kicks, both existing kicks as well as future kicks. While at the same time, these principles allow the necessary flexibility to reflect the kicks different stages of development, their thematic areas and specificities. Therefore, when you prepare a proposal, please pay careful attention to these principles as they showcase the basis of how the IT finances and monitors kick activities. Well, we have heard earlier that the IT is a results-oriented and impact-driven institute. In addition to that, I'd like to say that the IT's drive and mandate to be a flexible, unique organization in the use landscape has to be balanced against a comprehensive legal framework. And this framework is composed, amongst others, of the Horizon 2020 Framework Regulation, its rules for participation, the EIT Strategic Innovation Agenda, which sets the objectives for this call, as well as for the forthcoming call for proposals, the EIT's financial regulation, and a specific EIT regulation. So all these documents are available in the IT's website. They are also included in the memory stick that you have in your conference package. And it is important that you become familiar with them while you prepare your proposals. 
Now, based on these premises, the principles aim to serve the following goals. First, contributing to the achievement of the IT's objectives, as they provide the conditions for the kicks to deliver on the reinforcement of the innovation and entrepreneurial capacities of Europe. Secondly, they also foster kicks results and impact. The IT incentivizes the kicks to turn investments, as we have heard before, into tangible and measurable economic and societal impacts, such as the creation of new businesses, high-quality jobs, and promoting a risk-taking and entrepreneurial culture. The presentation on monitoring will develop these aspects in greater detail. Thirdly, ensuring accountability and compliance. Every euro counts. There's accountability of EIT funds and respect for the principles of sound financial management. And if you participate in other programs, I'm sure that you are quite familiar with them. It's of key importance whilst ensuring flexibility and enforcing compliance against the legal framework, in particular the contracts that will be concluded between the IT and the KICS. And the presentation uh, that will follow this one on the principles for financing will elaborate on these issues. And finally, identifying opportunities for simplification. The IT and the KICS are uniquely positioned to be a test bed to experiment within their boundaries, new and more efficient forms of funding activities that are conducive to innovation and the generation of significant impact. And this is why the IT fosters a structured dialogue with the KICS to identify and act upon opportunities for simplification. So in brief, this is what I wanted to tell in this introduction and to put into context and explain the rationale underlying the development of the IT's principles for financing, monitoring, and evaluating kick activities. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So uh, next is David Tash. David, you're the money man. Uh, so uh, you're going to be very pop. You and Javos uh, will be very popular at lunch, I think. Uh, please, go ahead. Yes, thank you, Vashko. Thank you, Richard. Uh, yeah, well, money man, it can be frightening, but we try to encourage you and give you an encouraging presentation that, and show you that this is really not difficult. Uh, so my presentation is about the EIT's funding model. And as you can see on the slide, our motto is financing for impact. As it has been emphasized by the speakers before me, this is an impact driven institute, and this is an impact driven model as opposed to input driven model. So what I will speak about uh, under this pre presentation, first I will guide you through the principles for financing. A lot has been covered already, but I will put this uh, more into the EIT funding framework. Then I will introduce you the way how the relationship between the EIT and the KICS is formalized through different contracts. And then we will move on maybe more practical issues on how to get EIT funding and what kind of activities are funded by the EIT. Uh, this information is very much based on the, EI, on the note on the EIT principles for financing, monitoring, and evaluating kick activities. So if you would like to learn more details, this note is publicly available on our website. You can, you can consult it. <coughs> So, we consider that this is a smart funding model based on three principles. First principle, leveraging and pooling. Uh, this is very much about smartly combining EIT funding uh, and at the same time leveraging and aligning KIC partners and KIC partners' resources towards innovation. The second principle is financial sustainability. Uh, this has been repeated over and over, but uh, it's coming back in, a, in my presentation, so this means that this is a very important uh, goal to, to, to be achieved in order to produce a long-lasting impact. And the third principle is uh, supporting and incentivizing the kicks, so the EIT model is designed in a way which promotes impact in the short, medium and long term. 
I will speak a bit more about each of the principles on the next slides. However, this is very important to underline that the principles are common to all kicks. And this is a stable framework for a long period of time. Nevertheless, how these principles are implemented, uh, this is up to the kicks. This may vary a lot between the kicks uh, in terms of uh, degree of maturity or by the thematic area. And as it was mentioned already, there's a bottom-up approach. So the kicks are responsible in designing and implementing their activities, but when doing so, they have to bear in mind uh, that these are the underlying principles. And also, this is very important already at the, at the proposal stage. When you put together your proposals, these are the underlying principles that you have to follow. The first principle, uh, leveraging and pooling resources, uh, <coughs> this has been mentioned as well several times that the EIT is funding 25% of the overall budget of the kicks, up to 25%. Uh, on average, this is important, there is always a devil in the details, on average here means that this is on a multi-annual frame, so a kick does not need to fulfill the 25% from year to year, but this is on a multi-annual framework. And also it means that it, this is at the kick level. So it doesn't mean that for each and every activity there must be a 75% contribution. Uh, this doesn't mean that for each and every partner there must be a 75% contribution. This is at kick level. Uh, the remaining 75%, uh, this shall be financed from other sources. Uh, what other sources, partners on resources, uh, other you fund, and so on. Uh, and this is a smart model. We believe that this is a smart model because this ensures long-term involvement of kick partners due to the long-term nature, multi-annual nature, on the one hand. On the other hand, due to the proportions, this ensures a financial commitment by the partners to the kick. And as such, the EIT funding becomes a catalyst for investment in innovation uh, by achieving a critical mass of resources. Then the next principle is financial sustainability. Uh, this is very important and it has been stressed out by governing board members, by my director, that uh, the, the, the integration of the three pillars of the knowledge triangle must go beyond the availability of EIT funding. Uh, and uh, of course the kicks have a life cycle, uh, setting up development, achieving financial sustainability and becoming financial sustainable. Uh, so this is, an, this is something which will be achieved on, uh, on the time span of several years. So the kicks of course will not become uh, financially independent from the first year of operation, but this is the long-term objective, gradual reduction of dependence from EIT funding. And as this was highlighted by one of the criteria, uh, one of the selection criteria, uh, financial sustainability must be an integral part of the business model. Uh, and in order to achieve financial sustainability, the kicks have to mobilize other sources of funding. What kind of other sources we are speaking about? Uh, again, there's a wide range uh, here, just some, some examples, maybe uh, raising funds from intellect, intellectual property or generating revenues from activities, involve venture capital, and so on. Our third principle for financing uh, is providing support and incentivizing performance. So the EIT financial contribution is allocated in a way which strikes a good balance between two requirements. One requirement is to contributing to a kick's long-term strategy, while the other requirement is to reward performance and ambition in the short term. And this is very well reflected uh, by the different components of the EIT funding. We have the support element and the competitive element. The support element, uh, this is the part 
which will be equally distributed among uh, the kicks of the same wave. So in the context of this call, we are speaking about two kicks. Uh, and then the competitive element, uh, this will be a result of an assessment. Uh, I refer back to Daria's presentation. Uh, she already briefly touched upon these elements. So when assessing a kick's performance, we will take into consideration past performance, near future plan and out outlooks, and thirdly, and equally importantly, the multi-annual progress in achieving the mission and strategic objectives of the kick as set out in your proposal. Uh, so this competitive assessment will be carried out by the EIT, if necessary, with the involvement of external experts. Uh, and uh, also an important aspect that the kicks are evolving. We could see the different stages from setting up to development to maturity. So in order to ensure adaptability, the exact criteria and other modalities uh, like proportion between the support and competitive funding are decided on an annual basis by the board. Just to give you a very maybe obvious example, in the first year of operation, this competitive element makes rather little sense, so then it's likely that the allocation will be based more on the support funding, while later, when the kicks start to move into operation, then the competi competitive element may become more important. So having seen the principles, uh, let's move to a more legal topic. And I'm not a lawyer, I'm a finance person. But as you know, if you have ever been involved in other EU grants, uh, the funding is always formalized through agreements. Uh, so what kind of agreements the EIT has with the kicks. Essentially, there are two types of agreements. One is a long-term cooperation agreement between the EIT and the kick, called Framework Partnership Agreement. Uh, and this agreement specifies the common objectives, uh, nature of the activities planned, the general rights and obligations of the parties. Uh, this is signed uh, for seven years, however, it can be renewed later. Uh, and uh, quite important uh, message is that there is no financial commitment uh, embedded in the framework partnership agreement because the grant agreements, which are signed typically on an annual basis, uh, are serving as an instrument uh, to award grants to the kicks. So seven-year framework partnership agreement and then annual grant agreements within the seven years. I believe that this is a quite convenient representation of the different types of agreements uh, which exist uh, between the EIT and the KICS and within the KIC. So I mentioned framework partnership agreement and grant agreements concluded between the EIT and the kicks, and signed on behalf of, of the EIT by the EIT director, and on behalf of the kick by the kick legal entity. Uh, and then, uh, this is very important that the EIT does not have agreements with the kick partners. It has an agreement with the kick legal entity or the kick represented by the legal entity. So to ensure that the that the terms and conditions of the framework partnership agreement and grant agreement are transposed further to the partners, uh, the kick legal entity must sign so-called internal agreements with each and every partner. So for example, when you prepare your call, you will have a certain number of partners, you will sign internal agreements with them, but then later on, new partners may join. So whenever a partner joins, uh, formally, it accedes to the kick when it signs the internal agreement. Okay, I hope it was not too heavy so far, because I know that agreements, uh, speaking about agreements, it's, it's, it's never easy. Uh, so we will move to some more 
practical topics, uh, how to get funding. This is more tangible, I believe, or I hope. Uh, so, as I mentioned, we have the seven-year framework, which is implemented through annual funding decisions. Uh, and this is how the time span looks like. Uh, the EIT defines the annual criteria for funding, very important for the competitive element, as I mentioned, during the first quarter. Then, on this basis, the kicks they start to prepare their business plans. Uh, this is, uh, we acknowledge that this is not an easy process, uh, coordinated by the legal entity. Uh, it, information needs to be collected from all the partners, compiled, and then a comprehensive business plan uh, shall be presented to the EIT uh, in the third quarter by the end of September. And then, on this basis, the EIT is assessing the business plan and then the governing board takes a decision on the annual funding. So, for example, now we are in 2014, the current three kicks uh, have been communicated by their funding allocation to 2014 uh, in December 2013. So, when they start the implementation, they already know what the exact allocation is. So, business plan, this appears on this slide. Uh, I will explain a little bit what the business plan is, what it is about. Uh, so this includes uh, how the KICS strategy is operationalized. Uh, it is a comprehensive document uh, describing, on the one hand, the implementation of the seven-year strategy. On the other hand, it describes the planned portfolio of activities for a particular period, typically one year. And also, it sets clear targets, deliverables, key performance indicators for each of, of the activities planned. Uh, as opposed to a work plan, we call it business plan, because we would like to highlight that this is not a purely operational document. This is a very strategic document. While the business plan is for one year, it's very important that it's part of the multi-annual frame. So one business plan has to be built on the previous one and should lead to the next one. Uh, and quite detailed guidance is provided by the EIT on the structure of the business plan, what to include, templates, and so on. But maybe this is less relevant now for the proposal stage. Of course, it will be very relevant for the uh, winner who will become a kick. Uh, and then uh, kick business plan as it was mentioned on the previous si slide, uh, this is the basis for the award, and it has a certain legal value because it will be attached to the grant agreement. Uh, and also, uh, last important aspect of the business plan, that once the kick activities have been implemented, the kick has to report on the implementation, and, uh, and, uh, and the point of reference will be the business plan. So, a very important document. Okay, and now we have seen the principles, contracts, how to get funding, but okay, what? The EIT is funding. Here, I introduced some new terms. That's true, because maybe you have not seen so far kick added value activities and kick complementary activities, but the concept was very well explained uh, by all the speakers before me. Uh, so, kick activities, this is a portfolio of integrated activities from the three pillars of the knowledge triangle. And kick added value activities are very much about the integration of the knowledge triangle. So, these are activities which, with the aim to integrate the different parts of the knowledge triangle and to contribute to the overall objectives of the EIT. We also acknowledge that the kick uh, is not a usual legal structure, uh, so that's why the establishment, uh, coordination, or the administrative activities of the kick are part of the kick added, added value activities. And uh, just to link this to financing, kick added value activities may be financed up to 100% by the EIT. Uh, for this reason, of course, the costs 
of KiCad did value activities uh, shall meet certain eligibility criteria which are foreseen by the EIT legal framework, Horizon 2020 and so on. But I would like to stress EIT is part of Horizon 2020, so all the implementing rules, rules on eligibility are very much aligned to Horizon 2020. And then we have the key complementary activities. Complementary activities are the ones which have a clear and described link with at least one key added value activity. I would like to stress that it's not necessarily a one-to-one -one relationship. It can be a portfolio of activities linked to another portfolio of activities. Uh, and the key complementary activities are not financed by the EIT. Uh, they are, of course, very important parts of the key activities. Uh, they shall be included in the business plan. They are reported on, but they are not financed by the EIT. Uh, also, for this reason, all the requirements on, on reporting and so on are, if I may say so, are lighter, much lighter compared to kick added value activities. Uh, maybe you find this very abstract, uh, but actually the whole concept has been very well explained before if you think about existing activities. It has been stressed uh, uh, by the commissioner, by the chairman, that there is a great potential, a great capacity already existing in Europe. Uh, at the universities. So please use this capacity. Uh, this should be uh, part of your partnership. So when you prepare your proposal, you should select the partners which have the greatest capacity. And due to the KIC and the KIC framework, this provides you a platform to integrate these activities from the perspective of the knowledge triangle. So, in summary, uh, if you think it was too far too detailed and complicated, then please remember just the three main messages from this slide. Uh, so, this is a smart funding model promoting impact in the short, medium, and long term. Remember our motto, financing for impact. This is an impact investment institute. Second, leveraging and pooling resources towards innovation. This is very well embedded in the 25-75% model, in the added value activities, complementary activities model. It's very important. And then the third one, multi-annual multi nature, implemented through annual funding decision. So there is a, cert a, a, a certainty. So the kicks will exist when we sign the framework partnership agreement. There is a long-term uh, commitment. However, the financial commitment is decided on an annual basis. So thank you very much for the thank attention. You. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no, that, that, that wasn't heavy at all, David. Um, <laughs> it's easy uh, to get funding, you see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I've, I got an immediate question for you and, and Zabolch, or whichever one of you. It's, you, you showed the slide, the one of your earlier slides had, you know, 25% EIT funding, 75% other. Where? Where do... Where do I find the other 75 percent? What, what are the possible sources? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will, I, I will give you maybe some examples. Uh, so uh, quite large of this funding can, be, can come from the partners' own resources. Uh, there are a lot, lot of business partners, for example, who are eager to, 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 to contribute. Uh, also, uh, this can come from existing European programs like other Horizon 2020 programs, structural funds, uh, and so on. So or can count to it then? Yes, yeah. yes. Or from national funding schemes, regional funding schemes. These are just a few examples. Uh, OK. All right. Do you want to add anything, Zabos? Uh, David, David actually, I'm on. Yeah. Uh, David actually uh, explained all, okay. the, all the potential possibilities. There are, there are not so many other uh, elements there. Okay. Well, I think we'll, there'll be probably more questions on this from you, but before we do the questions, let's get a little bit more of the picture in mind, okay? So, uh, next, Romain. Uh, you're talking about monitoring, so you're kind of exactly. like the schoolmaster here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, give the report cards. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Richard, for the introduction. So I do my best at the school master. Um, I, th I didn't actually count uh, how many times this morning session uh, the words impact, results, 
flexibility have appeared, but I think these were kind of the main mottoes that we've heard this morning. So what we will focus on in this uh, presentation on uh, monitoring is indeed there are some expectations from the kicks which will win uh, this call to deliver results and impacts, also mentioned by, by the commissioner, by the chairman. So this is uh, the expectation settings, so maybe I'm a good schoolmaster at this stage. So this will be the, the, the main aspect of, of my presentation. And actually being the last speaker uh, amongst the panel of my colleague, it would be really, really easy for me to actually come back to what they say because this is kind of a rounding up uh, exercise, looking at the monitoring aspect, but also referring to the principles which were set up by Vasco, so the principles which are actually covering uh, the document which was referred as a note for a principle for financing, monitoring and evaluating the kicks. So this is under this uh, overarching uh, principles that my presentation will take place. And you have seen now with David how this principle uh, will apply uh, to the financing and now it's time to, to look at how the principle will apply for the monitoring. So um, what I wanted to say also is that one of the main principles which was mentioned by Vasco and this is applicable for monitoring is fostering kick results and impacts. So this is the main objectives. And my presentation is actually uh, addressing two purposes, because the question might be, why monitoring now? We're only at the call and call stage, so why should we think about the monitoring? So what you will see in my presentation is the, the, the design of the monitoring and how this would be implemented. So at least you get an understanding of how the approach of the EIT and the concept which are underlying the kick concept are also applied to the monitoring. So this is to give you this overarching view that everything is actually making sense and this is also applicable for the monitoring. So everything is uh, rounded uh, around the EIT and KIT concept. Another uh, uh, objective of my presentation, and there I might get a bit more attention, is actually that some of the elements I would touch upon are of relevance with two criteria which was mentioned by the EIT director, um, two which are under the pillar impact, so 3.1, impact and competitiveness, and 3.2, output and kick scoreboard. So this, this will be of interest also for you if you're preparing a, a proposal, and this will be tackled at the end of my presentation. So, monitoring the kicks for impacts. Three key design, uh, which are actually guiding the monitoring approach that the EIT uh, will implement to monitor the kick activities. Continuous, adaptive, and bespoke. David mentioned, actually, that uh, the partnership between the EIT and the kicks is on, is on a long-term basis with annual implementation of business plans. So this gives the opportunity to continuously monitor the kicks because this is part of this long-term partnership but with incremental uh, yearly implementation. And there, the objective uh, will definitely be to, to look at, um, at, at those activities uh, which, with the objective to improve or at least to optimize or to incentivize, to facilitate, so these words which were mentioned also this morning, this morning sorry, uh, the high quality of results, uh, innovation excellence, and the efficient use of resources. So this will be uh, definitely uh, the topics which uh, will come from this uh, key design, which is uh, the continuous aspect of the monitoring approach. Adaptive, again, the kicks have a long time span, and there, of course, what we will see is alongside the development of the kick, that the maturity of the kick will evolve. And this is definitely also the approach which is taken here, that the monitoring strategy and monitoring approach should also fit to this changing reality of the kicks along the years. So this is why there is a built-in flexibility in the monitoring approach to fit to the reality of the kicks, where the kick stands in, in, this, in its sorry, development stage. Uh, last aspect is uh, bespoke, so every kick is a kick, but definitely, and this was also mentioned this morning, each kick is addressing specific societal challenges and also from within a particular thematic area. So each kick is unique because they are addressing a particular aspect with a particular business model, particular business case to reach dedicated impacts. And there again, the monitoring approach uh, will has will have as a key design factor 
a tailor-made approach so that the, each of the kicks are actually monitored from the right perspective, so the perspective where it makes sense for the kick to be monitored because each of them are different. So now these are the overarching principles under the monitoring approach. How will this be implemented? <coughs> so the kick is actually creating value at different levels. So I think now you're kind of familiar with the kick concept and this is a kind of a complex animal, it was mentioned this morning. And the kick is actually delivering value at different levels. And to match this reality, uh, the, the monitoring approach is also based on a multi-layer approach, and more particularly a three-pronged approach. So these are the elements which I mentioned on the screen, and I will actually go through each of them one by one. Again, give you more of a, I would say, gist of what's behind, and more information is to be found in, in the notes for principle for, moni for financing, monitoring, and evaluating the kicks. So starting with a strategic review. So why is it actually strategic? Uh, it is strategic because it's actually looking at the assessment of the implementation of a KICS multi-annual strategy and also how the KIC is contributing to the EIT mission. So this is the strategic nature. Uh, it will actually focus uh, on assessing to what extent the KIC has actually developed a portfolio of activities which is ensuring coherence with its overall strategy, multi-annual strategy, and also coherence with the objective of integrating the knowledge triangle. So who will actually do this assessment? Uh, this will be under the responsibility of the EIT governing board, who will actually formulate recommendations and, and follow them on a rolling plan basis. And actually there will, even, there will be a structured dialogue between the EIT governing board and the KICS with two main milestones per year where this recommendation and the follow-up of this recommendation will be discussed. So this is really an opportunity also given to the KICS to have this structured dialogue with the EIT governing board. And you have seen through the presentation of this morning that the governing board has a key role to play. So this is a very uh, interesting uh, feature to have this strategic dialogue possible. Um, second level is actually the activity review. So if the first one we're looking at the uh, overall portfolio, so more at a strategic level. This one is more looking at key specific activities of the kick. So it's activities which are selected from the kick portfolio. What actually we'll be looking at, uh, especially in, in this assessment, will be looking at the inflow and output. So meaning which results have actually been delivered and how have they been delivered. So this will be the main objective uh, with the particle, uh, particular uh, aim to promote high quality of results, innovation excellence, efficient use of resources, and as well innovation potential. So this will be really the objective of this activity review, and again in the spirit of facilitating, so it will be in close collaboration with the KICS. So that's really underlying this particular aspect. And also to perform uh, this assessment, uh, the EIT will be mostly in charge, with uh, the support of uh, external experts who will actually help to assess this inflow and the output of these kick specific activities which were selected. By the way, this is also giving the opportunity to the kicks to have a kind of a sounding board, so checking that what they are doing is, um, is actually in line with the strategy, and more at the activity level, and also get the advice or the recommendation or, or the views of the experts vis-à-vis uh, -vis their, their activities. Third level, uh, performance measurement system. So there we Again, coming back at the rather uh, overall portfolio of, uh, of the kick, so all the activities are taken into account, but in this context, more of a quantitative manner. So the objective, and you will see also in my next slides, uh, is actually to quantify the progress against uh, defined key performance indicators. So I will come into uh, to, to this afterwards, but the objective is definitely to assess quantitatively the progress. Um, of the kick toward its strategy and also towards the EIT objectives. So this is exactly what I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation when I was referring to uh, the elements which are in the selection criteria under the pillar impact. And you will see some terminology which are actually uh, relating to this uh, uh, selection criteria. So uh, what I wanted to say on this one is that the kick will actually record data related to, to two sets of key performance indicators. 
So one, as mentioned this morning, actually the peak success are the EIT success. So it's important as well for the EIT to consolidate it, to consolidate the results from the kicks and to showcase this to the public. This was actually done by the chairman this morning when you saw the slides uh, with the different figures on the number of graduates, on the number of startups which have been created. So actually this is under this uh, definition of uh, EIT core KPIs that this data were collected from the kicks. So when we refer to EIT core KPIs, this is a set of KPIs defined by the EIT to actually showcase the progress towards this mission, but which are directly linked to the kick results. So this is where the kicks will be requested to provide data for these KPIs to be generated, and then hopefully we see all the figures which we're presenting this morning going over the years. So this is what we're referring to uh, also when we mention EIT scoreboard. So these are these EIT core KPIs. The second set of uh, key performance indicators that the uh, KIC will also be requested to provide on a regular basis as part of their performance management system uh, will actually be the kick specific KPIs. So if you remember the key design, and also it was mentioned this morning, each kick is different. So there, it is up to the kick to define what are the best relevant KPIs which could be put in place and implemented to actually monitor the implementation of its strategy towards its expected goals. So this is definitely up to the kicks to define these kick specific KPIs, which are also referred to in the different documents that you have in the, in the call as the kick scoreboard. So it's really important and interesting to realize that the kicks, of course, is working towards its own impact, but also serving the objective of the EIT, and this is why uh, the performance management system that the kick should actually develop should be able to deliver these two sets of data on a regular basis. So now two questions, of course. Um, how to contribute to the EIT scoreboard and how to build your own kick scoreboard? I think these are the direct, direct questions coming from this slide. So how to contribute to the EIT scoreboard? So these are, and now you're familiar with them because they were already presented to you, these are the six so EIT core KPIs, which are common to all kicks. So all kicks should provide values for these KPIs to be consolidated. So you see the list here. Uh, what's interesting is that these KPIs were actually selected because they were the most uh, pertinent one to actually monitor the creation of new business, the creation of new business opportunities, and the development of uh, talent, and also the promotion of entrepreneurial education. So this is, these are really the overarching uh, targets which are behind those KPIs that you see now on the screen. How to build your own kick scoreboard? Easy, as a schoolmaster, I think now you should all know by now that a kick is actually defined by its expected impact, for which it defines strategy goals. For reaching the strategy goals, it has to define a strategy. And from uh, the strategy, it has to put in place a partnership and activities which will contribute at the end of the process to reaching the impact. So what's really important at this stage is that each kick is responsible to define its, uh, uh, its kick-specific KPIs and also that these KPIs are actually uh, overarching so that they are uh, taking on board the multi-annual basis of a kick. So the impact is uh, down the line, maybe mid-term, maybe long-term, but it's important that the KPIs that the kick define for its own activities are also taking this aspect into consideration. So this is a more a far-reaching plan. So why is it all important at this stage that we present this information? At the proposal stage, and again, I will be referring to this criteria 3.1, which is uh, impact and competitiveness, and 3.2, which is output and kick scoreboard. What you will see in there is mentioned to the EIT course KPI as the contribution of the kick, and as well the kick specific KPIs. So at the proposal stage, designing your performance measurement system and defining your KPIs is actually part of the criteria, because there is a reason to this, that this is also demonstrating the methodology that you will put forward to ensure that your results are actually monitored. So this is why this is referred, uh, especially in criteria 3.2. And also, at the proposal stage, setting targets to your KPIs. And it was also mentioned 
uh, this morning will uh, also give an indication of, of what is that you expect to be achieving, so wh what will be your impact. So this gives these two possibilities to demonstrate uh, your methodology, to monitor your strategy, and also to set uh, the level of impact that you want to achieve. Then, this is more the design phase, so this is for now. Then, at the implementation stage, this is rather, uh, I would say, business as usual, because if the system is in place and implemented, then the system is ready to provide on a regular basis these two sets of data I was mentioning, the EIT core KPIs and the KIC specific KPIs. So, hoping not to have been too much of a schoolmaster <laughs> at this stage, <laughs> Uh, these are the takeaways, so what you should remember after this class. Um, definitely, we're talking about the smart monitoring. So I think, I hope at least, that I convey the message that the monitoring approach is really tailor-made, adaptive, so really to follow the, uh, the reality where the kicks will stand at a given period in time, and also offer, as mentioned here, this multi-layer approach, so to offer this strategic dialogue with the EIT governing board, looking more specific at kick activities, and as well this performance measurement system, which is there to collect all the relevant information to demonstrate that the kicks are performing and the EIT is actually accomplishing its mission. Again, just to restate uh, what I just mentioned, the performance management system is key in actually quantifying the plan output and impact and also to monitor progress as uh, the kick goes on on its development cycle. So this is what I wanted to share with you today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we're not at recess yet, but we soon will be. Uh, please Thank you. have a seat. Uh, the, uh, let, let's, uh, lo looking at the time, uh, Basco, let's come to you uh, right quickly on the startup, the startup phase, okay? All right, so I'm back. Um, well, I think by now you probably think about lunch, but I'll keep it short and sweet. Um, so let's move on to the startup phase. What is the startup phase? It is the phase that follows uh, the designation decision by the IT governing board in December this year until the end of 2015. So one year period, we call it startup phase. And as you will see in my presentation, the conditions applicable to the future new kicks in their first year of operations will differ in terms of financing and monitoring requirements from an EIT typical grant cycle. And this is what David and Roman just presented. In other words, those principles on financing and monitoring that my colleagues explained will essentially be applicable to the new kicks as of 2016. So let's focus on 2015. So what happens if you win the kick bid? Congratulations. This means that your partnership is uh, truly excellent and that your proposal and ideas are convincing, very promising, and with great potential. But this is just the beginning. The first year, 2015, from our experience, will be a very intense, challenging, but rewarding period. And probably there are some startups here in the audience or entrepreneurs. I mean, will you raise your hand if you're a startup or entrepreneur? Well, there's one. <laughs> okay, so you're probably familiar that the first year of operations, when, when you start a venture, they're very demanding. And from our experience, this, this uh, will happen in the first year of operations of the kicks. Partnership arran arrangements must be finalized, the legal entity established, management and staff must be recruited, and many details that were in the proposal, so theoretically, they must become very real. It is the responsibility of the designated partnerships to ensure a good start. But VIT will incentivize the kicks to set up the right governance and management in accordance with the commitments that were made in the proposal. So it's very important that what you put in the proposal in terms of the commitments, the resources, the strategic and operational commitments that you have there, they must materialize in 2015. So shortly after the designation, uh, the IT will communicate to the KICS the modalities of the startup grant. 
and we expect to do this shortly after the hearings take, taking place, as you have heard, on the 9th of December, and uh, shortly after that, we mean a few days, but definitely until the end of uh, December, maybe at Christmas, not on Christmas Day, but you will receive information about the decision of the governing board. And we expect to hold meetings with the representatives of the new kicks in January 2015 to concretely discuss the next steps. All these elements will be confirmed in the letter from the IT director to the coordinators of the winning proposals, including a startup package. What will be inside the startup package in terms of information and documents? Uh, there will be a roadmap with the milestones for 2015. And there will also be a model startup grant, uh, which will be based on Horizon 2020 agreement. And we expect to sign this uh, startup grant as soon as possible after the designation, and definitely in the first quarter 2015. We also expect to uh, see in this package uh, guidelines on how to submit the 2015 startup plan and the uh, respective templates. Right. Now, you've seen this in the, in the call text. Uh, the startup grant will have a duration of one year until the, the end of December 2015. And uh, it will foster the setup of, of the new kicks, and it will amount to a maximum of 4 million euros. And this grant will be 100% funded by the IT. As I said, a precondition for the award of the grant is the submission of the startup plan and the budget according to the guidelines that we will provide you. What type of activities will this grant cover? Uh, you have some examples there the establishment of the legal structure, including the setup of the legal entity, recruitment and appointment of a CEO and other core management staff, the coordination and signature of internal agreements between the legal entity and the key partners, and preparatory work for the submission uh, of the KEEK's uh, first business plan for 2015. Now, you've seen this in the framework of guidance. Um, there's a list of indicators uh, to monitor kick preparatory actions in 2015, and there are three main objectives. And these are legal readiness, operational readiness, and fostering the, IT, the IT's identity and visibility. Throughout 2015, the IT obviously uh, will work hand in hand with the new kicks and will provide support and regularly accompany the achievement of these objectives by the new kicks. So let's go into more detail on uh, each of these objectives. I'll start with the legal readiness. Again, you have seen these tables in the framework of guidance, and I've simplified the tables that you can see here to improve uh, readability. And there are three main milestones. So you see uh, the setup of the legal entity, and we expect from you to, to have it uh, set it up by, by the end of the second quarter, 2015, the signed framework partnership agreement between, uh, signed by the legal representatives of the IT and the KICS by the third quarter, 2015. You remember in the call text that it states that within nine months after designation, we expect to sign this agreement with the new KICS. And third objective under legal readiness, uh, as I just mentioned uh, in the previous slide, the conclusion of internal agreements between the legal entity and KIC partners, and this should take place between the third quarter and the fourth quarter. This will be quite important because uh, these agreements will be, uh, this is a technical detail, uh, but for the lawyers in the room, these will be annexed to the FPI, these, these agreements. Now, secondly, operational uh, readiness. And there are four milestones to be achieved. Recruitment and appointment of the CEO by the third quarter, 2015. Well, the CEO will sign the FPI with the IT, so it's quite important that he's there. Uh, and then until the end of the year, uh, you have some time to appoint the other management staff. Uh, and we're talking about um, 
for example, a chief financial officer, chief operations officer, and also uh, co-location directors, uh, as an example. Thirdly, the setup of operational functions at the key legal entity level. And what are these operational functions? There are two. First, uh, to set up an accounting system. And this is important because uh, you should be able to track the financial flows between the legal entity and the partners. And uh, secondly, to uh, initiate the implementation of a reporting and monitoring system. This is also uh, e essential to uh, monitor KIC's results. And fourth, uh, submission of 2016 business plan in the third quarter. So here, the new KICs uh, will be aligned in terms of uh, timing with the existing KICs because they have to submit their business plans by the 30th of September. Okay, so the 30th of September, you have to submit your business plan uh, in 2015 for the following year. And um, then this plan will be submitted to the board for, for uh, approval, and this will trigger a financial uh, decision by the governing board to the KICs. And the third and final objective for 2015 is uh, fostering uh, the IT identity. And there, the milestone is the development of the KICs communi communication policy that builds on the communication strategy that you have included in the proposal. Right, so we are concluding now, and we're going to summarize, and there are three takeaways that I'd like to leave with you. Um, as I mentioned, I mean, the startup phase is, uh, will be a very intense and demanding period that should not be underestimated. And there are three uh, key messages. The modalities of the startup grant will be communicated to, to the new kicks in December 2014. Secondly, we may award a grant up to 4 million euros for the efficient setup of the new kicks. And finally, the future new kicks will have to work to achieve all objectives set in the list that I've just presented of indicators to monitor, monitor kick preparatory actions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, Vasco, uh, Matteo or, or Vasco, uh, um, look, I was lo looking here at uh, questions that uh, several of you submitted when you registered for the conference, and there's one question that many people seem to be asking the same way, uh, and basically um, asks one, what's the most important chapter within the proposal? Uh, another person asks, what are the three most important messages that a kick needs to include in the proposal? Another person asks, what's the main points to highlight in the proposal? I mean, they're all kind of asking the same question, like, what do you really mean? <laughs> so. Well, um, maybe I could echo some of the things that were said this morning and reiterate what was said this morning. I think it's important to understand that the EIT is different, but not for the sake of being different but because we invest in impact, we address innovation in a new manner, and uh, that is also very well reflected in the call text. So we do not prescribe top-down what your proposal should look like exactly, what the composition of your partnership look like, where your co-location centers should be located. This is not up for us to decide. This is something you know best you who would like to set up a kick with high innovation potential in a relevant field, and you know best what partners you need to achieve that impact, which we would like to see. So it's up to you. The EIT grants a huge amount of flexibility to the kicks, to the applicants. I know it's a challenge because you might still have the old idea in mind that we tell you what we expect you to deliver it by day X, but this is not the case here. We would like kicks to achieve impact. There's a long-term commitment, but there's also a huge amount of flexibility which offers opportunities to come up, bottom up, with the best possible ideas. Okay. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah, possible. A couple of points. Um, 
So, because you were asking what are the most important parts uh, yeah. in the proposal. So, you've seen uh, in, in the annexes to, to the call text that there, to, there is one of the forms which will be the main body of the proposal. And you've seen that, that we've quite simplified uh, the way you're going to present your proposal. And if you recall the presentations this morning on the selection criteria by Jose Manuel, uh, he indicated what are the, the three important pillars of the proposal. Strategy, operations and impact. And you also have points allocated to each of these pillars. Uh, and under each of them, you have three sub-criteria. They all have 10 points each, uh, but two of them have 15 points, so they have more points than the other ones. And these two are the kick business model and financial plan, and impact and competitiveness. And I think this uh, fits quite well what was said this morning by our uh, governing board members, uh, where we have been throughout the day highlighting the importance of impact and the key business model and their financial plan. Okay, all right. Questions? Fast off the mark again, yes, okay. Uh, and over there to you next, all right. You practice this, I think, all right. Yeah. Here's a quick question for Roman, yeah. What are the, the sanctions and the incentives around the KPIs? Because I think this is very important, because I think that if those are not correctly set, then you tend to drive incremental innovation in order to achieve the KPI, rather than systemic or disruptive innovation in order to get impact. Yeah. Thank you. Very interesting question for sure. Um, so one thing is that this EIT core KPI, so these are really the, the KPIs that each of the kicks should provide. And what you have seen, what, what is actually on the screen, the, at this stage they are rather output KPIs. And at some point, what we intend also to, to work on is to enrich them with impact KPIs. So to really look at the impact. So this is really the, the main aspect. And, and also, there is one of the selection criteria uh, which relates to the feasibility. Uh, so the things that if, if you provide a strategy and, and a business model, which associated to this, you have KPIs which are quite irrelevant, then, then this m m lead to a mismatch at this stage. So the things that um, what you have to bear in mind is that this has to be feasible, it has, of course, to be ambitious. And in terms of, I would say, uh, sanction, at this stage it's more facilitating. So the thing is that if along the way, and this was also mentioned by, by the commissioner this morning, if along the way you need to adapt, of course, I mean, we'll not be there to say uh, you did it wrong or something, but it's more uh, working together with you to actually deliver the impact that you would like to achieve. Okay. Question over there. Bern Vakatov, Biotechnology, North Anvers-Vader. What's the magic about the four million for the startup phase? Is that a cap? Is that experience by the last uh, uh, kicks you have set up? Yeah. The, just the, the, just yeah, that's uh, right. experience. That's right. That's from our experience. Yeah. So we had, uh, with, the, with the existing kicks, we had, uh, well, a uh, different... Uh, arrangement uh, was the first time we were doing it back in 2009 when they were designated and their first evolve operations was 2010. So indeed we had, uh, we, we didn't call it startup uh, grant, we, we had that more uh, kind of bureaucratic name so you know we are also becoming the IT entrepreneurial and we give startup uh, because this exactly uh, defines this, this period of setting up the kicks. So in 2010, back, looking back to 2010, we had in fact uh, two types of grants and we have simplified this. So we learned from experience, we also uh, are aware that the, the level of awareness now, today, is different than back in 2009 and 10 when we just started. So as a result of, of all these, we came up with this uh, figure of up to 4 million euros will be the, the ceiling for funding uh, the, the setup of the new kicks. Okay, question over there. Yes, my name is Erika Sendrak. I'm from Hungary, from the Research Center for National Sciences. Sciences. Um, my question links to you, actually to your previous question, where the 75% co-funding comes from. And the answer was that it could come also from uh, other uh, EU funding. Now, particularly that uh, EIT became a, a part of the framework program, the Horizon 2020 family, wouldn't it mean perhaps double financing? Double financing? Yeah. So, uh, firstly, I would like to confirm that indeed that is a, that is a quite likely option that uh, future uh, partners of the KICS will, will do involve uh, Horizon 2020 other initiatives uh, in, their, in their business plan portfolio. Uh, and 
that is also true that uh, the question of double funding is, uh, is a frequently uh, recurring question that we are getting. Uh, the, the risk is, uh, is obviously there. However, uh, this is already uh, mitigated by the, by the general funding model where it is very clearly stated that uh, the key added value activities, which are, which are the, the, the activities which are directly funded by the EIT, uh, are, are separated from the, from the so-called key complementary activities, uh, which are going to be the potential Horizon 2020 activities. So, so uh, it should be clearly prevented that uh, the same activities are actually funded from two different sources of funding. Next question. Thank you. Ana Maria Pantia, Ascent Consulting, Malta. What I would like to put forward here is less of a question, but more like a comment or an invitation to action afterwards. We keep talking about getting entrepreneurial and getting collaborative and so on. So I would really propose, because it's building upon previous comments, that during the lunch time, we really form two groups to the left and to the right of the lunch hall and try to start really networking and get hands-on also in terms of seeing who could work with who on which topic. That's so just a comment, less of a question. That's an excellent suggestion. Let's do that, okay? Yeah. Good. Uh, let, let's be more specific about it. The, those who are doing raw materials in the lunchroom go to the left. Those who are doing health go to the right. And those who don't know what you're doing, I don't want to. <laughs> Thank go, you. Go outside. Thank uh, okay. you. Okay. <laughs> All right, okay. Question back there. My name is Suresh. Um, I'm from the University of Copenhagen. So, just, sorry, a little louder. Yeah. Uh, my question is pertaining to Romain, but you're talking about monitoring um, certain KPIs. Aren't you better off incentivizing uh, those um, what you call um, uh, KPIs, which are rather hard, as you can see, uh, startups and, and incubation, they're they are really, really uh, something that can't be done easily, while education, new graduates and all, we do that already. So it's, it's nothing new. So it's the more incentives you give, the, it, it, it triggers a process of further innovation and entrepreneurship, rather than saying, telling universities you churn out graduates with certain skills. Um, that's, that's where the whole confusion is. Yeah, I mean, uh, as I mentioned, I think the, the, the KPIs, especially that you're referring to on, on the yeah, number of new graduates, I mean, per se, as I mentioned, it's more an output than an uh, outcome and an impact. So definitely, uh, now the, the IT is at its uh, own stage of development. But as I mentioned, the impact will increasingly also be uh, one of the main drivers of, of this uh, KPI, um, mostly performance measurement system. So, yeah, definitely, I mean, this is something taken care of, so. Right there. Thanks, uh, Damien Borowski, Landing Group. I have one question regarding financing. We all know that the maximum EAT contribution is 25%, uh, but we also know that the goal is to progressively depart from the EIT funding. So I was wondering, uh, what is the EIT's uh, plan for the year three, four, five of the KICS operations, do you have any guidelines saying we're, we just won't contribute to 10% in year five, or how does it look like in the existing KICS? Thanks. Indeed, thank you for this question. Uh, indeed, David uh, very well explained and described the, uh, the principle of, of sustainability uh, as regards financing. And he also very well uh, emphasized the fact that the sustainability principle is, uh, is not something that you can uh, implement from, from the first year of operations. Uh, and looking at the example of, uh, of the current, uh, current kicks and also the overall life cycle of, uh, of a framework partnership agreement of, of a kick, uh, the, the funding in the first uh, few years uh, will be expanding in a way. And in the final, phase of, of a kick, uh, the, uh, the level of EIT funding which is, uh, which is provided should gradually uh, decrease. There is no specific uh, set of percentages on a yearly level or uh, there is no, no life cycle which is predefined to this respect, but, uh, but this is a driving principle. So initially it grows and in the, in the final phase of, uh, of a kick it should be gradually decreasing. 
if, 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 I, may, if I may comment yeah. Sabolch on this. Uh, during the presentation, we have touched upon this 25% on average. And this is very important, that this is over a long period of time, over seven years. Uh, so as Sabol said at the beginning, our experience with the current kicks that in the first, second year of operation, the ratio of VIT funding was higher than 25%. But as they move into, into implementation, they pool and leverage other resources, this may change. So this 25%, 70, up to 25% is set for seven years. Now what will happen after 2020? I, we cannot tell it now. Okay. Excuse me. I have uh, a question. Well, oh, hold on. The quick microphone right there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm waiting for a long time, actually. Oh, all right. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. yeah. My name is Reza Askari from the Technical University of Braunschweig in Germany. You talked several times about the relative figures. Up to 25 percent would be funded. Now, my question is, uh, what about the absolute figures? What um, about what um, amount of money talked? are we talking about in a seven year framework referring to your experiences? Well, this, this, is, this is set in the legal framework. The total amount devoted to the IT is 2.7 billion euro for a seven year framework. And uh, well, uh, apart from a few percentages for the administrative costs, this is devoted to the kicks. So the, the EIT is, is here. To, to, to help you to facilitate that the kicks are spending this money in a, in a smart and wise way. Okay. Uh, uh, there is it right there. Okay. Uh, my name is Ana Daniela and I come from Portugal. Uh, I think that it's very clear the, the IT has a, a bottom up approach regarding how we address the teams, how we build the partnership. but. If you look at the already established partnerships, most of the collocation centers, they are located in the center countries of Europe. I come from Portugal. Do you think that it's, it's a problem to have most of the collocation centers already in the same countries? Are you addressing this in some way or this is not, you are not bothered with that? Thank okay. you. It's very much in line with what I said earlier on. There is nothing we would prescribe here. Um, two things. Whatever partnership you consider the best to deliver on your activities, to achieve the impact we would like to see, is the best partnership wherever it is suited. Guiding principle is excellent. Building on excellent higher education, research institutes and businesses, wherever they are located. So that is for the kick to side. In addition to that, it is our responsibility as an EIT to actually make the results, the knowledge, the good practices, the lessons learned from the kicks available to wider community, to those partner organizations, higher education from the knowledge triangle, member states which are not di yet directly benefiting. So this is for us, this is why we have set aside a clearly earmarked budget uh, to these outreach activities. And already what we would like to see at the early proposal stage now is that the kick takes into consideration this outreach uh, responsibility. So even if there is a limited number of partners or co-locations set up in Europe, we would like a kick in its proposal to set out a strategy on how this knowledge, this good practices can be shared with the wider community. Openness is here um, a huge important element of our strategy. Okay, uh, next question over there. Uh, we'll, uh, let's take five more minutes and then we'll go to lunch and then there is another session for questions after, so go on. Okay, Andreas Klosser, Helmholtz Institute, Freiburg. I have a question to, to David. Uh, you mentioned that uh, kick activities you know, should contain a portfolio of integrated activities coming from the knowledge triangle and that also these KAVAs should also uh, contribute to the integration of the knowledge triangle. You have been doing your homework. Well, <laughs> all right, okay, fine. Does, yeah. does it mean that uh, you know projects always have to contain something of this knowledge triangle? I mean, research projects always have to contain educational aspects uh, and so forth, or this is not said with it? No. Well, the, the, the concept is, and I think uh, very good 
a lot of good examples were given by, by the governing board members, Peter and Daria, before that, uh, and also our chairman mentioned that there's a huge capacity in Europe. There are existing activities, uh, uh, for example, in edu education, there, there are excellent master schools if I take uh, the thematic field of a, of a current kick in climate change. So this can be, of course, uh, a complementary activity which is pulled into the kick. Uh, so it doesn't necessarily to be to, to, to combine uh, all the pillars of the triangle. It can be a very good research project in the field. But what is the glue here is to integrate the three pillars. And this is what adds value. This is what kick added value activities are about. Okay, question there. Karel Franken from uh, Vito in Belgium. <clears throat> I have a question about the uh, procedure to audit the KCA. So is there a, a procedure on when a partner provides KCA? Uh, how will this be approved? And when does a partner know that the KCA is brought in, has been approved or will be approved? Thank you for this question. Indeed, this is a, this is a very interesting one. So, uh, the first issue which needs to be clarified here is that, uh, as regards the key complementary activities, as report, uh, as, as David actually mentioned it in his in this presentation, uh, there is a, a different uh, degree of of reporting requirements and dif different degree of detail uh, in which DIT is interested in. DIT looks at the at the portfolio uh, of. CAVA and KCA together in the framework of the business plan and in the reports. Now, when we, when we come to the, uh, to the audit requirements, uh, it, is, it, is, uh, it becomes uh, indeed uh, delicate, and this is an issue which has been frequently asked by the first uh, round of, uh, of kicks as well. So, and I know this is, since you're coming from Vito, that's, uh, that's, I understand this is why you're also interested in this one. So, uh, the, the principle which drives this is that uh, the, the rules for eligibility are not coming directly from the EIT. As David said, for the EIT-funded activities, there is a, a clear set of uh, eligibility requirements uh, which are in line with Horizon 2020 programs, which should, which should be respected. As regards the KCA, uh, considering the fact that uh, these are coming from various uh, funding sources, there are various funding rules which are applicable uh, to, these, to these activities. Therefore, uh, the IT will not have uh, an interest to and cannot go into uh, to a great uh, level of auditing requirements uh, for the KCA, but we'll, we'll, ask, we'll ask the KICs to, uh, to put them in, in a structured way into their business plan, and we, there is also a preset uh, of, uh, of requirements which we, which we ask. And also, this, the same is, will be asked at the reporting phase. And, uh, and the EIT will, uh, in the end of a certain period of time, which is, uh, which is not defined today, will we'll look at the reported KCA and, uh, and will kind of look at the, uh, the assurance of the audit trail that have been reported in the, in the, in the, in the reports on the annual ground. So uh, the message is that uh, do not be afraid. Uh, the KCA will, will not be audited uh, in the same way as it is audited uh, for the kick added value activities. Uh, we do introduce a kind of, uh, today we call it light certification process, but this does not go into the, into the level of checking as a, as a normal audit would do. Uh, Zabolch, I think I'm going to remember that. Do not be, af <laughs> do not be afraid. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, there is a question back there. Yes, uh, I'm Caroline Vasseur from Humicor in Belgium. And actually a question for the audience. I was wondering how many companies are represented here. And if you're with a company. Okay, quite a few, yeah. You asked the question for what reason? Yeah. Um, because I heard a lot of university um, people already, and I was just wondering maybe during lunch to check with other people from industry about the involvement and added value of the kick for industries. Okay, all right. Uh, well, we could make that a third zone, but no, the point is that everybody's supposed to mix. So, uh, yes. 
Uh, at a future event, perhaps, Alex, you could have people from companies wearing different color badges. Then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, let's take one last question. Is there one for before lunch? Yeah, okay, right there. Hold, hold on just a sec. Microphone on its way. Um, I'm Björg Egelandstahl from the University of Life Science in Norway. I was just wondering if you have any experience with what is a suitable partner number in the kits that are running? Well, maybe I could answer. In the call text, we give an indication uh, of the number of co-location centers we would like to see, four to six. The reason here, that is one of the important lessons we learned from the previous wave, from the setup phase of the existing three kicks, that there is a limit to the complexity that can be managed at the very beginning. So this is why I would like to limit the uh, number of the co-location centers uh, in an early phase. So this number applies only to the proposal stage. That doesn't mean that later on, a kid can decide to widen, to deepen its partnership. That is a decision up to um, the kick in a later phase. However, that is a note of caution in terms of the complexity of a partnership that can, man can be managed at an early phase. And there's a huge responsibility for those partners involved in the early phase to actually drive uh, the setup phase. There's a huge commitment uh, requested from partners in the early phase. So that just as a note of caution from my side in terms of absolute number of partners in the early phase. Okay, thank you. Let's take a break and get some lunch. Uh, your suggestion about, uh, let's see, what did I say? Raw material is on the left, health on the right, yeah? Yes, that, that's as you walk in the door, okay? All right? Uh, and uh, what happens next before you go? We go into the, the last circle, I was about to refer to Dante, but I won't, uh, to, uh, uh, of the process of the submission of the application at 2.30. That's a workshop if you want to know the details of that. At 3 o'clock, uh, there's a broader session about other uh, commission programs, uh, which you are welcome to join also. But thank you very much to the EIT staff for their questions and comments.